Hello, and welcome to this online worship service, a ministry of First United Methodist Church in Salisbury, North Carolina. This is a special Sunday, March the 21st, and we're excited for this time that we can gather together in worship. On the church's worship webpage, you can click to let us know your attendance. You can download a copy of the worship guide so that you can follow along. You could also make a secure gift online, let us know a prayer request, and you could also click on the announcement sheet so that you can learn about more opportunities to be engaged in the life of the church. Especially note what's coming up. Stations of the Cross this upcoming Wednesday. A marvelous way for you to come in person on the grounds of the church to remember Jesus' suffering that leads all the way to the cross. That's the Stations of the Cross this upcoming Wednesday. Also make sure that you see opportunities for Vesper service on Monday, Thursday, the Good Friday worship, which will be online, and then also Easter Day is right around the corner. We're grateful that you are worshiping together with your sisters and brothers, and together we are united as the body of Christ.
Let us join together now in the call to worship. Remember not the former things, nor dwell on the things of old. For the Lord is doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Let us press on to make God's goal our own, forgetting whatever lies behind, straining toward what lies ahead. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord, His mercy is more, stronger than darkness, new every morn, our sins they are many, His mercy is more. Our God is compassionate and merciful, knowing us with an intimacy we cannot comprehend. There is nothing we have done or left undone that is not already known by God. This gives us confidence to be fully ourselves, that we can be fully forgiven. Let us pray. God of grace, you call on us to repent, to endure, and to hope. Strengthen us that we may work always for the common good. We confess that though we look for sin in others, we are reluctant to examine ourselves. We are caught up in worldly wisdom and forget your words. We complain about troubles and fail to see your good gifts. Have patience with us and nurture us that we may grow in love. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Christ has broken down the dividing wall of hostility between us through his death on the cross. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. We are reconciled to God through Christ and entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. Thanks be to God. for the prayer for illumination. God, our deliverer, you invite us to see the new thing you are doing. Help us to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Lead us to respond with generous acts of love. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Old Testament lesson is Numbers chapter 11 in selected verses. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated our servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you may lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them, that you should come say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised an oath to their ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they only come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, Put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there. I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them, and they shall bear a burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all yourself. Here ends the lesson. Our epistle lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9 and 20 through 23. Listen with me for God's word. And so, brothers and sisters, I cannot speak to you as spiritual people, but rather as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. Even now you are still not ready, for you are still of the flesh. 
For as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations? For one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos. Are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. For we are God's servants working together. You are God's field, God's building. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. So let no one boast about human leaders, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All belong to you, and you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations upon all of our hearts be holy and acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week in the story, we continue in 1 Corinthians. Last week, we heard from the very first chapter of Corinthians, Paul is addressing some major divisions within the church. One of those major divisions is a sense of elitism. There are some in the church who think that they're better than others. They've, they've got it all figured out. It's like they're wearing shirts in the church building, some saying, Team Apollos, others saying, Team Paul, others walking around wearing shirts that say, Spiritually superior to you. It's like they're playing a big game of Jenga and they're working to make their tower look higher and higher than everyone else's. They're using the gifts God gave them for the building up of the church instead to build themselves up. And the foundation gets shakier and shakier. Using our gifts for the wrong purpose creates jealousy and quarreling. It creates divisions rather than unity and peace. The message translation of verse 3 says it this way, As long as you grab for what makes you feel good or look important, are you really much different from a babe at the breast, content only when things are going your way? We can recognize the immaturity of the Corinthians at a glance. They're, they're grasping and trying to make sure things go their way without regard for the security of God's church. Paul even goes so far as to call them infants, babies, saying they can't handle real food. They are on milk and on that lovely pureed baby food. They're in the stage where they're, they're grasping their hands and they're saying, mine, mine, telling other people no, and dropping their toys on the floor just so other people will pick them up. It's easy to look at the church in Corinth and think we're nothing like them, but churches all over the world and all sorts of denominations Yes, maybe even here, we have moments where we are divided and distracted by old allegiance to leaders, to old ways of doing things, old hurts that we let stack up, old fights we thought we had let go, 
Things we thought we had let go stack up and adds to division and distraction so that we forget what we are about. In the current moment, we might hear people say things like, uh, Apollos is fine, Paul, really, but, but you're my favorite pastor. Or talking in the hallways saying, you know, Apollos, Apollos is my favorite preacher. As a way to rally people to your side and your preferences. The mistake, Paul says, though, is it's never about the leaders anyway. God is the one who gives the growth. God has the purpose And there is nothing good that happens without God behind it. We are called, like the Corinthians, to use our gifts to help people, to nurture people, to be about the work that God sets us about. In the Numbers reading that we heard from Pam, Moses too is dealing with a hard situation in his congregation. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts about these two different congregations. When I first put them side by side, which I didn't have an opportunity to do until this week in the story, I thought these two groups of people, they're having a hard time, but they're really different. They're kind of at different extremes of difficulty. But the more and more I look at them, the more I see their similarities. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. Moses is dealing with a tough moment for God's people. Numbers in Hebrew, the the Hebrew title for that book is In the Wilderness. We call it Numbers, and either title is appropriate because there's literal accounting for all of God's people, all of the ways that they're in the wilderness, And then there's accounting for the story of what happens in the wilderness. It's an appropriate book for Lent, because in Lent we are in a wilderness of sorts, separated from comforts, separated from the patterns that we're used to, and trying to focus on the hard, beautiful truth of the cross. We've been in wilderness really since last year's season of Lent. We've had to give up worshiping together in the congregation in in this beautiful church building the way that we're used to. We've had to learn how to do worship and lessons and community and gatherings via technology that we had to learn how to use first. Everything that we stake our community on, our patterns have been disrupted So too, God's people are in the wilderness, having to learn to live in a different rhythm of life, feeding on manna, which scripture tells us tastes like a delicacy, but even if you're eating a delicacy, maybe that taste gets old after a while. In this snapshot of the story, there's a group that are longing for the tastes of Egypt, We all know how good biting into a a nice juicy rind of watermelon is. And leeks and garlic and the way that it seasons our food and and the refreshing bite of a cucumber. And there they are craving those things that are left behind in Egypt. But for them, it, it really is a false memory They are forgetting all of the back-breaking building work that went with those nice water-filled foods. They forget that that wasn't enough nutrition to help them really do the work that they were asked to do day after day with no break and no rest. When we remember the past and we don't remember the complication we are not remembering rightly. 
It's akin to me craving a cinnamon crunch bagel from Panera. Before I started my gluten-free diet, I loved those bagels. They are so delicious with that cinnamon sugar coating on top. But then I, I found out I had celiac. I had to really disrupt everything that I ate. I loved eating pasta. I loved bread-based foods. I loved baked goods as desserts. But if now I really truly craved those things, it would be a rejection of the health that I found. It would be deliberate harm to my own body. It would be ignoring God's answer to the years and years and years of prayers for an answer to my health issues. God's people have been delivered from slavery and oppression and backbreaking work into a new identity as God's people, even in the wilderness. And they're craving the wrong thing. It's a rejection of what God has done for them. And it started with a few, but but the few have infected the rest of the group. It's like a little kid throwing a tantrum in the store. Moses doesn't know what to do with these people anymore, and he goes straight to the source, and he says to God, God, you're the one that birthed these people. Now you need to provide them milk. I can't do this on my own. You know, God, they're, they're not even my people. They're your people. In a moment of vulnerability, I tell you, every single pastor, every single one has felt this feeling that Moses had. An insurmountable task, an insurmountable call God has called us to when people are acting out of their own interests and desires and building towers to something else. And it's good news for Moses and for all church leaders everywhere that God reacts graciously to Moses' request. When I read it in scripture, I, I'm taken aback a little bit. It feels like Moses might be being a little impertinent. He sounds a little bit like the rabble-raising crowd that were just complaining, but, but God hears him differently. So I thank God for a gracious response. It seems God does recognize that God is responsible for God's people. And so he beckons 70 people out of the group to help share leadership with Moses. And they too receive God's spirit, a sign of God's blessing and guidance. That's good news. You know, pastors and church staff, we, we can't do it all on our own. We can't. And I'm grateful that God blesses Moses with this group of people to help Moses help his people grow up a little bit. And I'm struck that even God must risk defiance if he wants mature children Maybe that's good news for you as you raise your families. You know, it doesn't matter what size church you are in. In Durham, I served a congregation of 43 people on Sunday mornings. That was too much to handle on my own. And I have a good friend who serves in a large church in Raleigh, North Carolina. They have 26 people on their staff, and it's still too much for them to do on their own. And you know, it really doesn't matter how large or how small your budget is. If the people of God don't show up, 
virtually in person, with your whole self when you come. There are big holes that are created that we can see right through. Our efforts seem fruitless and hopeless. Looking at these two congregations, centuries apart, and their similarities makes me wonder what makes for mature leaders and what makes for mature followers. Where there is division and quarreling, it's always the result of immature spirits. You know, honestly, sometimes we we react with anger and we fear and we paint it as righteous indignation. Even when we're upset about something and we feel like it is for the right reason, sometimes that's really about an immature spirit. Leaders, you know, aren't rallying points for competing parties. But as Paul says, co-workers who perform complementary tasks for the achievement of a common goal. I planted the seed, Paul says, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. He uses another analogy. He says, I, Paul, am the architect. I made the blueprints, but but Apollos, he's the one that built the walls. Paul is a smart man. He knows what he has to build with, is Christ himself. There are many, many gifts in serving here at First United Methodist Church in Salisbury, but the greatest gift has been serving as a co-laborer with Pastor Mark. We've had a common goal, a common prayer for the health and thriving of the church. And we've prayed diligently for each faithful next step. And you know what? There's good news. Our prayers have been answered with none other than you. Than you. Honestly, it may feel like bad news to you that I will receive another church assignment in July. But it's not bad news, even if it's sad or it's hard or we wish things might be different. It's good news. Because God has answered our prayers for the next faithful step to be revealed. God had led us here. Paul writes, I don't want to hear any of you bragging about yourself or anyone else. Everything is already yours as a gift. Paul, Apollos, Peter, the world, life, death, the present, the future, all of it's already yours, and you are privileged to be in union with Christ, who is in union with God. Being a mature church, being mature disciples and mature leaders means that we can face hard things. It doesn't mean we always get what we want. And in fact, it usually means turning into a headwind or turning into challenge. And really, it looks like utter foolishness to the world. But when disciples' identity is grounded in the love and the call of God, your identity, security, purpose, your meaning is assured even when you face failure or resistance or rejection. We are all now together walking in the wilderness toward the cross of Jesus Christ. And in the wilderness... Our identity is formed and forged. Who are we to be, First United Methodist Church, for this moment, for 2021, for Lent, for Easter? Who are we to be 
for our beloved brothers and sisters we already know and our brothers and sisters yet to be in the community. In your baptism, you are washed clean of your old life. You have died to it and you rise a new creation in Christ. You know, you could stay there drinking milk and eating pureed food. You can even, you know, wrench yourself out of the building that God's building. But we are called to be cruciform disciples. Cruciform shaped like the cross of Christ, like Christ is and was in the world. Crucified, Christ-like discipleship means facing the cross too. You and I can only do what God has asked us to do by trusting that God will be at work in what we do. The only thing that makes any job worth doing, whether folding and sealing letters or cleaning the bathrooms or preaching a sermon, the only thing that makes any job worth doing is the God that we are serving. Maybe you don't feel up to the task or you see some some holes in our building But the good news is even for the babes in the congregation at Corinth, even to the babes here, we together are the temple God is building. God is dwelling amongst us. And it looks like foolishness to the world, like it might topple over any minute. How could God reside in this whole filled building here? But this building where God dwells with us, it's not full of holes. God is making us holy as God is holy. And God makes us whole. Whole, full, mature disciples and a mature church serving God's purposes. To be mature Christians here and now means we're not shaped by consumerism, by having the best religious deal on the block, but that we always plant the seeds of God's mercy, watering them and knowing the growth happens by God's action rather than ours. In your baptism, you are called to be a minister, to embody Christ's cross-shaped love. It looks to some like folly and foolishness, but it is the love of Christ poured out for the world. The work that each of us has been given by God is indispensable for the kingdom of God and its coming here on earth. Beloved, brothers and sisters, are you part of the 70 God is calling to step forward this day? Yes, I'm I'm talking to you. I want to talk to you about your next faithful step. Seriously, this this is not a joke. It's not rhetorical. Call me, email me, set an appointment so you and I can talk. The time for goodbyes has not yet reached us. But the task set before us here and now, it it is urgent and important. And you are called by God to step up for the next faithful step. There's nothing to fear, though. For all things are yours. Whether Mark or Stacy or whoever your favorite pastor in the world is, or the world or life or death or the present or the future, all belong to you and all belong to Christ and all belong to God Almighty. In 
in the spirit of the wilderness, in the spirit of Lent, in the spirit of stepping up and into mature discipleship. Would you open your hearts and minds now as we pray the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer? Let us pray. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and wholeheartedly yield all things to your pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant now made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. And now I present Jerry Lee for baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. If so, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, Say, I do. I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? If so, say, I will. I will. Now, congregation and Brenda, as lay leader representing you here, I ask you, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We, we do. do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Jerry in your care? With, With God's, God's help, help, we, we will, will proclaim, proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. Of Christ. We, we will surround Jerry with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will, we will pray, pray for him that, that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us all join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. 
After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing Sing to to the the Lord Lord, all the earth. earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Declare his his works to to the the nations, nations, his his glory glory among among all the the people. people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that, dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jerry Lee, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jerry, child of God, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Let your light so shine that others, seeing your good works, may glorify your Father in heaven. Now it is our joy to welcome our new brother in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Jerry, we light this candle because the light of Christ shines brightly in this world, and we believe that it shines brightly in your life. And we pray that this light will always shine in your life. May God continue to bless you. We give thanks for God's grace at work within Jerry's life And we know that God's grace is at work within your life. In response to all that God has provided and all that God is doing, you are invited once again to offer your tithe, your offering, to support the ministry of the church. You can make your gift online. You could drop it by the church office. You can send it in the mail. As we turn to the Lord in prayer, trusting that God hears us when we call out to God, we bring our prayers, our most urgent needs, and our concerns. And we are especially mindful of very dear people who are battling cancer. We pray for them and their loved ones who are caring for them. We especially remember Senator Bob Dole, Judy Fowler, George Hines, Taffy Jordan, Tommy Lewis, and Nancy Stanback. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are the true source of healing and health. In you there is calm. In you we find true peace for our lives. Help us, O Lord, in the midst of our weariness and our anxiety to relent, to give ourselves over to you, that we may be found whole. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, look down upon us because we are struggling with anger, with doubt, with frustration, with guilt, with loss, with regret. Grant, O Lord, your abiding presence that we may find the strength that we need to persevere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, 
Fill us with the promises of eternity. Grant us a clear vision of how you are drawing us forward in faith to take that next faithful step. Grant us the courage to step forward, trusting that you are calling us, that you will lead us. Lord, in your mercy. Every day we are made aware of our weakness. We are reminded of our pain. Help us, O Lord, to remember as well your tender love, your gentleness that holds us and carries us through life's difficulties. Lord, in your mercy. By your strength, revealed in our weakness, we are granted, O Lord, just what we need so that we may be found faithful in everything we might say or do. Help us, we pray, empowered by your Spirit, to be your people. And now, Heavenly Father, we come to you praying as our Lord Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Across the crowded ways of life, where sound the cries of race and clan, above the noise of selfish strife, we hear your voice, O Son of Man. In haunts of wretchedness and need, on shadowed thresholds dark with fears, from paths where hide the lures of greed, we catch the vision of your tears. From tender childhood's helplessness, from woman's grief, man's burden toil, from famished souls, from sorrow stress, your heart has never known recall. The cup of water given for you still holds the freshness of your grace, yet long these multitudes to view the sweet compassion of your face. O Master, from the mountainside, make haste to heal these hearts of pain. Among these restless throngs, abide, O tread the city's streets again. Till all the world shall learn your love and follow where your feet have trod. 
Till glorious from your head above shall come a city of our God. If anyone is in Christ, The old is gone. There is a new creation. Brothers and sisters, God is making us whole and making us holy, filling us with God's presence. Go into the world, take the next faithful step, knowing Christ is with you. Amen.